than two months. I've got to do a thing, and I'm afraid. Like many learning fellows before me, I will be going to see a panel of esteemed Unitarian Universalist religious professionals and lay leaders known as the Ministerial Fellowship Committee, or MFC. I'll be seeking preliminary fellowship as a UU minister. I will preach a 10-minute homily and answer a range of questions for about an hour. Last month, I submitted a 120-page packet of documents which, we, which they will review in detail and which reveals all aspects of my life and my preparation for ministry, including psychological assessments and many evaluations of my strengths and my growing edges. Anticipating this interview makes me feel vulnerable and frankly, more than a little queasy. The stakes are high for me. I'm deeply invested in a positive outcome, and yet I have little control over the process. I don't know the questions I'll be asked, and I don't know if I will have the answers at the ready. I am afraid of rejection. For pragmatic and deeply personal reasons, I've invested tens of thousands of hours and dollars into my preparation for ministry, and I've also invested my whole heart and spirit. Now my fate is in the hands of the committee. Yikes. One thing I know for sure, I will need courage to make it through the MFC. I will need courage because I am afraid and I can't make my fear go away. I used to think that courage was equal to fearlessness. If you had courage, I thought, it made your fear go away. Courage was the special province of warriors and heroes who fearlessly battled and triumphed over evil villains in childhood fairy tales and Saturday morning cartoons. It was something intrinsic to these special people, almost a superpower. I never felt much like a warrior or a hero, and I certainly didn't look much like the brawny Herculean ones that populated the television and movie screens of my youth. Yet I've learned a few things since then on my journey from youth to middle age. I've faced enough fearful situations to know that courage is not the same as fearlessness. Courage doesn't make fear go away. Rather, courage accompanies us through our fear. Courage gives us strength to endure fear as we face the everyday battles and challenges of our very real lives. I no longer believe courage to be the special province of special people. So how and where do everyday people like you and me get courage when we need it? Recently, I got a lesson on just this subject, and it's a lesson that gives me hope. When candidates for ministry come to the UUA headquarters in Boston for their MFC interviews, they are allowed to bring one support person to join them in the waiting room. It's in the waiting room where they sit with their fear until they are called for their interviews. It's in the waiting room after the interview that they wait again with even more fear for the panel's decision. Two of my dearest seminary friends went before the MFC last fall and they invited me to accompany them as their support person. So I got to see up close how they manage their fear and from where they got their courage. Both of my friends are gifted ministers with strong and loving hearts, discerning minds, and skillful boundaries, fierce convictions. I was not afraid for them. I was confident that they would sail through their interviews, and they did. But they were understandably afraid. Like all of us, my friends are susceptible to the universal human longing for affirmation of our worth, our value, our purpose, and the fear of rejection that goes hand in hand with that longing. As we waited for their interviews and then for the outcomes of their interviews, I observed waves of fear washing over my friends' faces. I also took note of what calmed their fears. Intermittently, their phones would ping with messages from supportive friends. 
As they read the words of encouragement, their eyes would light up and I could see the tension in their body's ease. My own gentle smile and affirming gaze had the same effect of easing their tension, at least for a moment, long enough to help them ride the next wave of fear. In their pockets, they carried pieces of paper scribbled with words of support that had been shared by mentors, colleagues, and congregants. They wore special items of borrowed clothing and pieces of jewelry gifted by dear friends and loved ones. I realized in the MFC waiting room that my friends got their courage mostly from outside of themselves, from other people, not from some intrinsic superpower. We get courage from one another and we give courage to one another. This courage assures us that even if we fail or lose the battle or have to deal with rejection, we are nonetheless and ever still loved and valued. The idea of courage coming from the outside, from other people, gives me hope and reassurance as I anticipate my MFC trial. Hope and reassurance that no matter the outcome, I will be okay knowing that I am known and loved and valued by my community. And yet, I also know that there have been times in my life when friends could not be found. Maybe that's been true for you at certain times in your life. Maybe that is true for you right now. Sometimes the affirmation we seek from the outside eludes us. Perhaps that's why we come here. Because when we find ourselves alone or disappointed by the ones closest to us, we need a place to turn to take courage this is one of the reasons I believe why religious communities exist, why the Church of the Larger Fellowship exists, for the sake of courage. In this community of faith, we intentionally gather and we intentionally offer and receive the love and affirmation that gives us courage to weather the inevitable trials of our lives. So as I face the MFC in two months, I will take courage from you, my friends, and inspiration from you too, because you are the ones who show up to give and receive, to support and affirm one another through this wild journey of life. I'm going to take a few other things with me too. I've begun to fill up what I call my little bag of courage to take into that fateful waiting room at the UUA headquarters. One of the things that will be in my little bag of courage is this tiny jar that has inside of it a tiny scroll. And it was given to me by a very dear friend who knows what it's like to face the MFC. And that scroll says, may you never ever forget how wonderful you are. I'm also going to have in my little bag of courage this handkerchief that was given to me by the grandfather I so cherished and who cherished me so. He gave this handkerchief to me soon after my aunt, his oldest daughter, died suddenly and unexpectedly. He gave it to me to wipe away my tears. And the last thing I want to show you that will be in my little bag of courage is this necklace. And it's special for a peculiar reason, because the medallion on it reminds me of the resurrection stone from my favorite scene in the Harry Potter books and movies. It looks a bit like the resurrection stone from the movies, and it reminds me that we can summon our ancestors to be with us and to stay with us when we face our greatest challenges. If like me, you are facing a struggle or a challenge and you are afraid, I hope you too will consider filling up your own little bag of courage. And I hope you too will take courage from us, your CLF family, because we believe in you, we need you, we appreciate you, and we love you. Take courage, dear friends, take courage.